Around the world, human populations are expanding, placing unprecedented pressures on our planet's natural ecosystems. Current extinction rates are at least a thousand times greater than only 300 years ago. Things are moving too fast. The natural world we leave our children will be very different than the one we enjoy today. It is clear that we, the human race, are primarily responsible for what is happening to our Earth and its ecosystems. What can we do to fix this? I believe that the planet is in serious trouble and we need to do something about it. I see our role here at the Center for Conservation Research is basically to help save the planet. The species and the ecosystems are in trouble and we need to do something about it. For the last thousand years, zoos have stolen from the wild. We've been part of the problem, not part of the solution. And I think that with concepts like conservation research and conservation outreach, we can actually do something good for the planet. And I think that's where zoos have to be these days. For science to save species, there are three critical elements. Understanding, education, and collaboration. In terms of understanding, first of all, we need to understand the problems that endangered species face. And then we need to develop knowledge to employ solutions that will help the endangered species gain a foothold again in the wild. For education, first of all, we employ graduate students and we teach them. We teach them the ways of saving species. And then we also pass that information on to, for instance, children and the general public. Finally, conservation is only possible through collaboration. And we're team players. We deal with industry, with governments, with non-government organizations and universities because only as a big team of partners coming together will we be able to achieve our goal. And our goal is to make sure that endangered species do not go extinct, that they are here forever to stay for all of us. Here at the Center for Conservation Research, we have an exceptional team. They're highly skilled, they're motivated, and they're driven by a common passion to really make a difference. You know, they're heroes because they're the ones that are going to make the difference in saving endangered species. And these are endangered species such as the whooping crane, the Vancouver Island marmot, the swift fox, the northern leopard frog, black-footed ferret, and the burrowing owl. These are the species that depend on this skilled team of highly motivated individuals. Vancouver Island marmots are one of the most charismatic and playful species that I've ever encountered. But due to changes in their habitat that have made them easy targets for predators, they're now the most endangered animal in all of Canada. Our research includes studying the captive population and partnering with field researchers to ensure that animals breed reliably and that released animals survive in the wild. However, there is a lot of work ahead of us to ensure that we don't lose this uniquely Canadian species. I think whooping cranes are one of the most beautiful and elegant birds in North America. They're still the most endangered crane species in the world. There's a lot of work left to do to, to save them and we're contributing to that. Uh, most of the work at the research centre focuses on trying to make sure that each fertile crane egg hatches out into a chick that can be reintroduced into the wild. We've covered a lot of ground in crane conservation to date, but uh, there's still a lot of work left to do. And uh, as a cooperative effort, I'm confident that we'll be able to ensure a future for whooping cranes. Currently, a third of all amphibians around the world are threatened with extinction. And this is a huge number. Amphibians are actually faring worse than birds or mammals. And unfortunately here in Alberta, we aren't immune to this problem. Leopard frog are threatened here, and they're also critically endangered in British Columbia. But we have the opportunity here to become a leader in amphibian research and conservation. And by studying leopard frogs in the wild, we can learn the necessary tools to help save them here in Alberta on a local scale. But we can also implement these tools on a larger global scale to hopefully help other amphibian conservation programs around the world. I think burrowing owls are one of the most amazing birds. And one of the really unique things about them is that they use burrows that are dug by other animals. Prairie dogs are one of the main animals that dig their burrows. And one of the challenges facing burrowing owls is that prairie dogs are quickly disappearing. And as a result, owls are losing their habitat and they're now endangered across Canada. We're conducting some important research 
to try and figure out which type of burrows burrowing owls need. There's a lot of burrows out there, but which ones really have the characteristics that the owls need to survive? We still have a long ways to go to recover burrowing owls, but I believe with some hard work and some dedicated science, we can save burrowing owls. When, when you're working with endangered species, it's not every day that you get a second chance, and luckily with the black-footed ferret, we've been given that chance. They were thought to be completely extinct in Canada, the States, and Mexico, and a small colony was found in the United States. Thankfully, they'd been captive bred from that colony, and um, the fact that they breed fairly well in captivity is, is something we have on our side. So. so now we're working with other organizations, specialists, and scientists in Canada, the United States, and Mexico to develop the strategies to bring the black-footed ferret back to the Canadian prairies. To me, swift foxes are one of the most amazing animals on Earth. They're so small, two and a half kilos. They can run, though, at speeds of 60 kilometers an hour, hunt in a blizzard, hunt in the blistering heat. So they're so amazing, and yet it's so sad because we lost them here in Canada by 1938. They were extinct in this country. Only because of a reintroduction have they come back. And we've been monitoring that success now over 10 years. It's unbelievable. You know, here we have the most successful reintroduction of a nationally extinct carnivore in the world. And we've done this together with partners. I'm proud of this. But there's still work to do. The future of the species depends on the protection of habitat. And we have identified what areas need to be protected. And now we're putting all the steps into place to make sure those areas are there for foxes for centuries to come. But at the end of the day, we come up with solutions that are needed for endangered species. And at that point, the qu real question is, do we have the will, we as a, as a human population, we as Canadians, do we have the will and the true desire to bring these species back or not? Sometimes implementing those solutions is not easy. It might take tough decisions. It might take incredible will and leadership and vision, but really, if we don't step up, the planet is in serious, serious trouble, and the species are, and it will affect us. I mean, it is already affecting us. So what is affecting the animals will affect us. By saving the animals, in many ways, I think, we're saving ourselves.